Bentornati This is me, this is me, I'm checking everything is okay, yes! Welcome, ciao Bill! Welcome everyone and if you are a repeater, welcome back for this first live of the 2021! <laughs> Buon anno! If I haven't told you yet, I'm so excited for this live. So uh, if you're here, please join the chat. Uh, if you cannot join the chat, uh, just listen and uh, make sure you have your uh, learning sheet downloaded. If you don't know what a learning sheet is, it's basically a sheet where I put all the notes from this class and you can download it in the link below in the description of this video and today's not really a class it's more like a cultural event so here's what we're gonna do first of all if you don't know me i'm emmy pedata from the languageverse.com most of you in the chat already know me which is great yes and today we are gonna talk all the things italian for this year and also for the other year. So I'm gonna just walk you through the Italian calendar. That's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna see which one are the um, celebration festivities that Italians celebrate. And we're also gonna see some way that we, some idioms, some kind of phrases that we uh, use <laughs> related to those months and to those specific celebration and uh, also we are just gonna have guess what a quiz yes we're also gonna have a quiz as usual i miss doing this quiz with you guys so if you're ready for a quiz give me a smiley face in the chat because i know you guys love quiz as well so as usual i'll have my water bottle because i talk a lot and i'm just gonna get a sip of water already <laughs> Ciao, Anne. So good to see you back here. Okay. So here is how we are going to roll. First of all, uh, I am going to, as I said, going through all the main festivities and celebrations that we do in Italy. And then I'm just going to point out some kind of things that we Italian normally do. There is a reason why, because I do this, because as if you know me, uh, you know that obviously I live in the UK, I'm Italian, but I live in the UK and uh, for uh, quite a few months now, uh, since summer, I haven't been to Italy to see my family. So I am decided, I, I have decided that despite not being in Italy, I'm going to make this year Italian anyway. Okay, so I am going to celebrate all the things that Italians celebrate. I am going to live the Italian way. I already do, but I'm going to do this even more. And one thing that I forgot to mention is that at the end of this live, towards the end, I'm just going to show you some ways that you too can use to make your life more Italian, to feel more connected to the Italian life and to the Italian culture. So are you ready? I am ready. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna, I'm doing this stream through, through Zoom, which is quite good. I like it, I like Zoom. So here's what I am going to do. I am going to share uh, the little screen just to see, just to show you what I am going to follow. Um, so if you have already downloaded this, great. If you haven't, it's okay. You can grab it in the link below in the description of this video. So this is a list of the, um, of the Italian festivities I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to present to you and also some modi di dire, like way, things that we say, okay? So let's start with, are you ready to start? I'm ready. I am ready. So let's start with Gennaio. So what do we celebrate 
in Janai. I'm not, I'm just going to show my face because we don't need that anymore. So what do we celebrate in Janai? First of all, Janai means, you know that, ciao Sally, I can see you. <laughs> so Janai is, you know what Janai is, come on. I can see your smiling faces. What is Janai is January. So January, obviously in Italy, we celebrate the new year. Uh, and as many other countries. And what do we do in the new year is quite, uh, it's, it's, there are some things that we do in the new year, but there are some things that I'm going to point out to you, which are quite fun. So uh, first of all, the 1st of January in Italy is called, if you know, type in the chat, what is the actual name that we give to the 1st of January in Italy? It is Capodanno. I'll type in the chat. It's also in the learning sheet if you want to have a look at it. It's Capodanno. So Capodanno means the head, capo, the head of the year. So the first day of the year is called Capodanno. And uh, in the night between the 31st of December, which is l'ultimo dell'anno, the last day of the year, and the uh, Capodanno, we do we celebrate, obviously, we eat a lot, but we also wear, as a sign of good luck, all Italians, well, at least pretty much the majority, <laughs> likes to wear um, red, red, uh, what's called in Italian? Uh, what's called in English? I forgot the word in English. It's called red underwear. <laughs> Yes, so we we wear red underwear as a sign of good luck uh, for the new year. Because if you don't do that, if you don't do that, it's bad luck. So we do this. And this is also why if it has happened for you to be in Italy during this during that time of the year, during like the New Year, New Year Eve and all that stuff, you will see a lot of shops that, that sell underwear with all red stuff in it. And if you're wondering why, that's why. So that's what we do. This is one of the things that we do. Uh, and uh, obviously, if you have followed my other live, the one before this one, just the one before Christmas, you know that Happy New Year in Italian is, you know that one. Uh, you can type in the chat if you want. I'll type it as well. Buon anno is happy new year. It means good year, have a good year. We have many ways to say this, but this is one way that we say it. So then after this celebration, we have another celebration in January, which is something that um, you, okay. Children especially love this one. This celebration happened on the 6th of January. On the 6th of January. And this celebration is uh, the called Befana. You know this one as well. If you're in my Facebook group, I put posts about it. But what is a Befana? Befana is basically a witch, a good witch that comes uh to the house of any child in italy and brings them toys and sweet if they've been good but if they've been bad they just receive dark and awful coal why do we do this this is a way to since you know italy is a catholic country so this is kind of linked to the um to the catholic tradition and to the story of Jesus, and we we are reminded of that uh, of that time when Jesus was was born and was visited by the three wise men that br that brings him gifts. So, as a way to remember that, we have this for the children. And one thing that I forgot about um, one thing that I forgot about to say about uh, the first of the year, the Capodanno, is that we have a say that we say a lot during this period. And it's this one. I'm going to copy it in the chat. So it is one is 
se fai festa a Capodanno, fai festa tutto l'anno. Which means, <laughs> if you party on the first day of the year, you party the whole year. However, as you can see, I have put some brackets there. I have put some brackets, I just put in the chat. I put that in brackets because we sometimes, actually, we often replace the five festa part with anything. So for example, uh, if someone is not behaving very nicely, okay? Uh, no, say if you're talking to a child, if they're not <laughs> behaving very nicely, say, oh, se sei cattivo a capodanno, se cattivo tutto l'anno. If you do this, if you're naughty today, you're naughty the whole year, so you don't want to do that. Uh, or uh, even for good oh, for good things, for example, oh, uh, se, um, se mangi bene a capodanno, mangi bene tutto l'anno. If you eat well on the first day of the year, <laughs> you eat well i'm just typing the chat uh mangi bene you eat well tutto l'anno so this is a way that we say to each that to remind each other that it's the first <laughs> it's the first day of the year so we must behave properly we must do things right you don't want to mess the first of the year up because if you do you mess the whole year up and you don't want to do that so this is the first way the first uh, say that we uh, uh, we've seen today, and I want to emphasize that later we're going to have a, a quiz. So you really want to remember these uh, things that I'm saying. And um, actually, I would like to know from you, um, how do you celebrate? Do you have any, any specific tradition that is linked to the first day of the year? Do you, uh, for example, as I said, Italian likes to wear uh, red underwear, but do you have any uh, kind of weird thing that you do on the first day of the year? If you do, type in the chat because I would love to know. <laughs> Not going to say, what about your love lentils? Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm going to share that one as well. So, um Nagori is still referring to lentils and uh another thing that we do on the first day of the year as well as on the last day of the year we like to eat lentils uh in italy uh and the reason why we do this is because for us lentils mean money so if you eat lots of lentils you're gonna have lots of money <laughs> in the new new year so that's another thing that we do Okay, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Eating such a food for good luck. Okay, I eat lentils. Oh, really, Bill, you do as well. <laughs> Alisa, lentils and grapes. Yes, what, what are grapes about? I don't know about grapes. Tell me more about grapes. Um, okay, let's see who else is here. Marie, you're here as well. That's great, I hope you're okay. I know you were not very well recently. Okay, so I'll let you share. I'll let you share. And then I know there's always a little bit of delay. So all of the things that you share come a little bit, come to me a little bit later on. Um, oh, Nini is saying, uh, wear yellow underwear for good luck. Okay. Do you? Yellow? Seriously? Oh my God. What, what's your country, Nini? Where are you from? Nagore is saying, in Spain we wear red underwear too and we eat 12 grapes exactly at midnight. Yes, I've heard of that. One with each gong of the bell. I would be so scared of choking. Uh, for good luck too. Also consider lucky to put a gold item in a glass of champagne. Nice. Anne says, father used to go out uh, the back door and then knock at the front door and bring in a piece of coal some salt and a bit of bread okay it was that for good luck uh, and bill says i make a dish with lentils pork and pasta yeah we make a dish with uh, lentils and pork as well in italy it's called cotechino which i really don't like my mom always forced me to eat it because say oh it's good luck but yeah i really don't like it anyways 
Uh, Alyssa say, my nonina says they bring luck for the whole year. I don't know the full reason. Okay, you're talking about grapes. Okay, yes. Uh, Nini is from Colombia saying, wow, that's far. But now living in Canada, nice. Uh, Marie says, black eyed peas for good luck. Oh, this is so great, guys. Everyone has got different food for good luck. It's great. It's great to know. I love knowing these things. Okay, let's move to the next month. February, which in Italian is, you know what's in Italian, February. You tell me in the chat. I will tell you as well. But I like when you tell me in the chat, you know, because I like the interaction. Even though I don't see you, I like to interact with you. Okay. So February in Italian is febbraio. So febbraio. Now, febbraio is a month where normally, and there is not a specific day for that, uh, we celebrate carnevale. But normally, carnevale, carnival is the Italian carnival. It's not a specific date, and I'm going to explain why. But normally, it falls in February. Normally, it happens in February. Okay. So what? First of all, let's see. What is Italian carnival? Well, you know the Italian carnival. I just told you it's carnevale. Okay. Now the word carnevale actually as comes from two words, which is car which are actually i'll type in the chat carne levare carne levare which became carnevale carne levare in italian means to take away meat okay so why because carnevale is the day is the last day when italian can actually eat meat and uh, eat fat food and this is i'm talking about the italians that uh observe that are um that are basically catholic you know it italy is a catholic country so the majority of italian is catholic so after carnevale italians uh start italians they are catholic start the period that is called quaresima so Quaresima mean is the period that goes from after Carnevale to Easter. And those are the 40 days where any Catholic is meant not to eat any meat as a way to purify themselves. Okay. So this is why <laughs> Carnevale is kind of the, the, the day where you can go crazy, you can eat whatever you want and you can do whatever, okay? Uh, there is more because obviously there is the pagan tradition and then the Christian tradition and then it was, it was a little bit of mixing up, but long story short, okay? We decide when Carnevale, Carnevale is by counting backward from Easter. So we count 40 days from Easter and then the 41 day before Easter, that is Carnevale, is the day where you take away meat, carne levare. Uh, sorry, it's the day after you have to take away meat. So after Carnevale, you cannot eat meat anymore, but before, you can and so it's kind of uh, the day where you can go a bit crazy and then you eat whatever so what do you do what do italians do on carnevale well you may have heard of those um um massive festivals that we have in italy like carnevale di venezia you know we have loads we're all different every region is different and every region kind of celebrate carnival in a different in a different way but generally what italian do is they dress up and uh, they play games they make jokes uh, <laughs> they uh they literally they, we have the say in italian which is a carnevale a carnevale ogni scherzo vale a carnevale ogni scherzo vale what does this mean it means on carnival every joke is okay so you can do whatever i can play a prank on you 
it's fine because it's carnival. So it's just like the day where everyone, everyone has got an excuses to go a bit crazy. Yes. Uh, and this obviously, you know, uh, it's very, very popular among children. They all get dressed up, but even adults, they get all dressed up. There are carnival parties everywhere in Italy, little ones, big ones. There is a carnival party anywhere. Uh, and uh, now, as far as, uh, since I'm from Naples in the region of Campania, uh, we have little, little traditions. They are all linked to the carnival. So one tradition is obviously about food. And we, uh, for example, in my family and in general in Naples, we prepare uh, some kind of sweets that you just eat on carnival, which are called uh, chiacchiere. Chiacchiere means chats in Italian, right? <laughs> But this is, these are little sweets, they're fried and they're sweet and uh, we just eat them on this period, they're very fatty. Obviously, as I said, this is the last day where you're supposed to eat all fat food and, you know, and meat. Uh, and um, we, we like to just like eat them and celebrate and just, you know, yeah, play jokes, play prank on each other. <laughs> That's what we do. Okay, let's see what, what's happening. Okay, uh, Flo is saying, we have carnival in France, Mardi Gras. Yes, in Italian is also called Martedì, which is Mardi or Tuesday. Martedì Grasso, uh, Fat Tuesday. Martedì Grasso, Fat Tuesday. Uh, followed by Le... Uh, what's that? Creme? Same as in Italy. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is Mercoledì delle Ceneri. Okay, yes. That's the Italian version is Mercoledì delle Ceneri. I don't, I don't know if I pronounce it well. Flo, is it Carem? Is it? I'm not sure if I say I hope I said it right. Anyways, what's, what's the meaning say? So it's the same thing as the Barranquillas, Carnevale in Colombia. Nice! Okay, what's Bill say? Back to, the, to Gennaio is there a connection between La Befana and Epifania? They're on the same day. Yes, Bill, they are the same thing. <laughs> yes. So Epifania is La Befana. It's the same thing. Yes. Um, Nago is saying, same thing in Spain. And the first day we do a parade with an effigy for a fish and then burn it on the last day. That's great. Okay. Wow, I didn't know this thing about the fish. Okay, my favorite UK tradition is Pancake Tuesday, the day before Ash Wednesday. The only, uh, the only tradition. That they <laughs> okay, yes, I love Pancake Tuesday as well. You're right. <laughs> Sally is saying so. Pancake day followed by Lent. Yes, Lent in Italian is Quaresima. That's it. <laughs> um, Ma Marie is saying, we also have Mardi Gras, most, notab most notably in New Orleans, Louisiana. Fat Tuesday, the day before, eat pancakes. Yes, <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like that you eat pancakes because I love pancakes. Okay. Um, by the way, I am celebrating my personal carnival this year. I'm doing my own Italian Carnevale online. And obviously, if you want to come, you're invited. I'm going to give you more info about this uh, in an email that I'm going to sending to everyone on my list. But you can also have a look at the uh, learning sheets of this event. So you can, you can learn more about it as well. I'll tell you more about this later on. Because now we move to March. So March which in Italian is, you tell me, what is it, March in Italian? Okay, what's, what's happening here in the chat? Everyone, <laughs> Sally says, so everyone else gets a crazy party and in England, we just sit at home and eat pancakes. Sally, not this year, because I have invited you at my personal carnival. You should have received already an email about it. So you're not sitting at home. Uh, by the way, this this year, uh, the carnival, Carnevale, Italian one, uh, is on the 16th of February. 
and uh, I am celebrating my own on the 13th of February on the Saturday. So if you want to come, oh, you know, I'm just going to say it now, if you want to come, please do. Uh, the, uh, the link to join is in the learning sheets of this event. You can have a look at it. Um, Nini saying, <laughs> Marzo, yes, Mar March is Marzo. Okay, so what do we do? What do Italians do? What do Italians celebrate in March? Okay, there are actually, I think there is just one in March. Um, yes, so one thing that is quite popular in Italy, on the 8th of March, Lotta Marzo, we celebrate International Women's Day. So this is not only celebrating Italy, this is celebrating in many other countries, but this is what we do on this day. Actually, this is what men do for a woman on this day, which is quite nice. They, uh, every woman gets a mimosa. Mimosa is a flower, very nice flower, yellow flower. If you've never seen it, uh, I'm sure if you should just Google mimosa, just put the spelling in the chat. It's this flower with little, uh, little, little, little balls. <laughs> And they're all yellow and they're very nice. So every woman gets one of those. Um, for example, my dad gets it for my mom, for me, for my sister, everyone. Uh, and International Women's Day is obviously the day where we celebrate uh, women and, you know, all the things that they've accomplished throughout the history. And also to remember what some women still nowadays go through uh, the not so nice things that we unfortunately hear over the news many times. So let's see, do you celebrate International Women's Day in your country? Do you? Like, do you bring someone to women? Uh, to the women in your life? <laughs> um, yes, yes, and I got it, it smell like come on. <laughs> I don't know. I know that in Poland they do. For example, I have a friend uh, who's Polish. She's one of my best friends. And in Poland they do celebrate uh, International Women's Day. Okay, let's move on to... Did I miss something? Let's move on to... Oh, yes, I did. I knew I, I was missing something. I'm so glad I had my notes. So, <laughs> so I forgot to say that March or Marzo is also the, uh, the, the month where <laughs> the weather is most unstable in, in Italy. And this is why it is, um, we sometimes say, Marzo e pazzo. So March, it, March is crazy. So this is this is a sort of proverb that we have. Marzo e pazzo, you know. Marzo is unpredictable. March is unpredictable. It's uh it's crazy. <laughs> so this is something that we say. Um because of the weather, because the weather in Italy in March is that time where sometimes like it's very sunny and then out of the blue. It just rains and it's like the UK all of a sudden. <laughs> so, yes. Um, okay, what's Marie saying? Marie saying this is like celebrating St. Valentine's, uh, 14th of February with hearts, flowers, cunning. Yeah, okay. In Italy, we do celebrate St. Valentine's Day as well. We do, we do. And, um, but I think, um, like, the eight of uh, the eight of, it's just like they're different. They're different kind of uh, how do you say? The different kind of celebration. Uh, I think like San Valentine's Day is more kind of like for obviously people that love each other. But yeah, the eight of March is more for women. Um, okay, now let's look at April, <laughs> which in Italian is. It's in Italian is, you know, Aprile. So Aprile is April. So there is just one main celebration that we do, that we celebrate uh, in Italy, and it is 
on the 25th of April. On the 25th of April, 25 aprile, that's what we do. Guess what we do? This is something that's just Italy, like Italy, like Italy 100%. Um, and that's, that's what we do. <laughs> The liberation, la liberazione. Okay, so this is a this is more of our a, a sort of like political thing related to political things that have happened in Italy. Freedom from the uh, fascism. Freedom, yeah. <laughs> so on that day we celebrate that. This is just like specifically to Italy. Uh, what's saying, Sally? Uh, same in the UK. Okay. International Women's Day is recognized, but we have no special traditions. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Uh, this is why I was wondering sometimes. So do people here celebrate that or not? But probably not. That's a shame though, but never mind. Um, <laughs> we just have April showers. Il te il yeah, it's true. In the UK, you have April showers. It's true. It's true. Yes. Okay. So let's move to May. Maggio. Oh my! In Maggio. 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 Okay. We have a couple of things in May that happens. Oh, again, I forgot something about April. Yes. Okay. Uh, in April, again, we have another thing that we say. We say, <laughs> and I, I, to be honest, I don't know why. Probably again because of the weather. We say, "Aprile dolce dormire." April sweet sleeping. <laughs> in April, it's great to sleep. <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, you know, it's the time where spring spring comes, and so kind of. I know you, you may you may say like oh it's spring so you know you should wake up everyone wakes up the nature wakes up so why you say aprile dolce dormire I don't know Italian get lazy in April they're just like aprile dolce, do dolce, eh, aprile dolce dormire that's what we say okay May instead which is maggio and then after this, after Maggio, I am going to do a little quiz, okay? So Maggio is more like uh, something that I think they do in, in the UK as well, is on the 1st of May, we have Fessa dei Lavoratori, which is Workers' Day, okay? So everyone, all people that work, they just get holiday on the 1st of May. And in May, May, just the month of May, is also considered in Italy the month of mothers. In fact, in fact, we uh, celebrate also the Festa della Mamma. Festa della Mamma. Festa della Mamma, Mother's Day, which happens on the second Sunday of the month of May. And you may ask, hey, what about Father Day? Where do you do it? We do that on, and I forgot to mention that, the 19th of March. 19 marzo. The 19th of March, where we celebrate Father's Day. I, am, I think in some other countries, you do this as you celebrate, obviously, these parents as well. But uh, maybe you celebrate them on different days. Let me know. What are your days? When do you say you celebrate Mother's Day and when you celebrate Father's Day? In Italy, Father's Day is always on the 19 marzo, 19 of March. And uh, the uh, Mother's Day is on the uh, second Sunday of May. Let's see what people say. Flo saying, first May, French people give each other lily. If the valley flowers for good luck. Oh, that's that's so nice. Um, Marie says, we also have Mother's Day in May. That's great. Father's Day in June in the, instead. Okay. Nagore say, Father's Day is the same as in Spain. Yeah, Spain and Italy. We are brothers, guys. That's it. 
<laughs> Saint Joseph's Day. Uh, Jesus Father. Oh, okay. I see. I see. That's nice. Okay, folks. Are you ready for a quiz? Because I am ready for a quiz. So if you're new to the quiz, here is what I am going to do. I am going to read the question in Italian first. And then, just in case you don't get it, I am going to translate it in English. I don't know why I'm, I'm talking like this, but you know. <laughs> I am going to say the question in Italian and then I'll translate it in English. And then you are going to type your answer in the chat. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, so are you ready? Are you ready? If you're ready, give me a smiley face because I am so excited to do this quiz. Uh, okay, let me get my questions. Let me get my questions. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Okay, here they are. By the way, if you had learned a sheet, you already see the question. So, domanda numero uno. Okay, question number one. Okay, cosa si indossa a Capodanno in Italia, ovviamente, per avere un anno fortunato? Cosa si indossa a Capodanno in Italia per avere un anno fortunato? What do you wear in Italy on New Year's Day to have good luck? Overall the year, you can type your answer either in English or in Italian if you know. I am waiting, okay? Cosa si indossa a Capodanno per avere un anno fortunato? You tell me! Stick around, by the way, because after the quiz, we are going to see the other months, the other uh, special occasion and events. And after that, I am going to go through my favorite list of how to make your year more Italian. Apart from celebrating these events, what else you can do to make your year more Italian? What else you can do? You will see. Okay, so let's see answer coming in. Okay, so Flo says red underwear. Corretto! <laughs> Nini, red underwear. Yes. Okay, everyone. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. So in Italian, red underwear is intimo rosso. Intimo rosso. That's how we say it. Okay. Domanda numero due. Domanda numero due. Cosa fanno gli italiani a carnevale? Cosa fanno gli italiani a carnevale? What do Italians do on carnival day? What do they do? You can mention one or more things. It depends. It's up to you. I don't mind. So you tell me. Sally, yes, you can say also biancheria intima rossa. Yes. Corretto. <laughs> um, okay, so I am waiting for your answer. The question was, cosa fanno gli italiani a carnevale? What do Italians do on carnival day? You tell me. And I will tell you if it's right or if it's wrong. And I'm sure it will be right because you heard me. If you were here before, you've heard me. Okay. Flo say, dress up, jokes, eat sweets, things. Nini says, disguise. Disguise? Yes, of course we do. Yes, all of these things. <laughs> Anything goes on. <laughs> 
<laughs> Billy says anything goes on her carnival day. Yeah, probably because people play just really random pranks. <laughs> Nagora, carnevale ogni scherzo vale, yes. <laughs> okay, yes, we dress up, we play pranks, we say jokes, we obviously eat a lot as well. <laughs> we eat meat, yes, because after we don't eat it anymore. This is why, by the way, um, related to the eat meat thing on carnival day, this is why in uh, Campania, my region, on that day we eat lasagne, which is, of course, a rich in meat dish <laughs> it's a meat uh, it's a dish ri uh, rich in meat so we, we eat on carnival obviously because after the land stuffed and so on yeah we cannot eat meat that much anymore okay <laughs> Sally but see ya. yes <laughs> yes craziness oh yeah domanda numero tre domanda numero tre And then I'm going to move on. Uh, cosa si regala durante la festa della donna? What do you gift people with, on Women's Day in Italy? What do you gift women? Sorry. On Women's Day in Italy, what do you gift them? Wait. Cosa si regala? What do you gift on? What kind of present do you give? <laughs> yes. The verb, I don't know. Uh, the verb is regalare. Okay. So... Regalare, tap it, means to gift someone with something. Um, so what do we give to people? Not all people, women's only, okay. Okay, you know if you heard me. Oh my goodness, the next one is June. And then we have the summer months, September and October, November, and December. Okay, Bill says, Mimosa flowers. Yes! Sally says, Un fiore. Um, it's not really any flower, really. You, uh, We just give that flower only. Mimosa. Yes. So it is Mimosa. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. Ready to move on to June. <laughs> June in Italian is Junio. Okay, what do we do in June? Hmm. This was interesting because, okay, I'm just gonna go with the um, official, I mean, national celebration. Okay, the first thing that we celebrate on the 2nd of June is Festa della Repubblica. Festa della Repubblica. Republic. We celebrate the Republic in Italy. We celebrate when the Republic started in Italy. Because, and I noted this down because I am not very good with this, but in 1946, the Italians were asked, do you want a monarchy? It was a referendum. Do you want a monarchy or do you want a, a republic? And the Italians said, Repubblica, okay? And so we celebrate when that happened on the 2nd of June. What happens? Well, you will see loads of parades across all the cities in Italy. You will see in the sky of Rome, especially if you're in Rome, you will see what's called frecce tricolori. So what are frecce tricolori? Frecce tricolori means um arrows three uh, three colored arrows and these are basically planes that fly uh throughout the sky on in rome and they have uh, you, you must have seen them they have this smoke coming out of them which is made of three different colors and the three different colors guess what they are the three different colors of the italian flag Uh, red, white, and green. So you will see this if you are, uh, if you happen to be in Italy on the Festa della Repubblica. So that is what happens at the national level. But this is what happens in my town in June, and especially uh, the first Sunday of June and the week before it. So in my town, which is called uh, Sant'Antimo, 
Saint Antimo is named after the saint, Saint Antimo, okay? And we have a festival dedicated to these saint. And uh, what we do is we have the statue of the saint, uh, silver statue of the saint, and there are uh, there is a parade every day throughout the first week, the first week that leads to the to, okay every day throughout the week that leads to the first Sunday of June. This statue is brought around the town in every single house of the town. This is why it takes a week. <laughs> and uh, it's our way to celebrate that, that saint, the saint that the city has been named after. And obviously we have concerts, we have, um, we have like lots of stalls, you know, you have the market with stalls and, you know, there is also uh, a play that represent the whole the whole story of the saint and how what happened to him and all of these things and uh, when they do that play which is made in the main square of the town uh, they do what's called uh, bolo dell'angelo you should google this and you will see what i mean so bolo dell'angelo means uh, angel, the, the fly of the angel. What is that? So basically, as maybe you will find this a bit scary, but this is normal for us. We have two children that are, um, that are basically uh, put on a um, rope and these, these children are carried across the rope at a very, <laughs> very, very high, okay, and the whole town can see them. And this, uh, they are basically carrying the head of the saint, a fake one, which is, um, which is basically representing the martyr, because uh, Saint Antimo was a martyr. So they, they are carrying this uh, head, plastic one and they are uh, guided across this rope, which is like very, very high, okay? And uh, there's music and, you know, everyone watches them. I know this is weird. I know maybe the way I described it, it may sound a bit weird, but that's what we do. And this is actually a common thing, uh, especially in the south of, in the, some towns in the, in the south of Italy, where um, we are very, very, um, dedicated to celebrate the culture the we are very very dedicated to celebrate saints especially if our town is named after a saint every town um well many towns in the in the south of italy have a patron saint and so every town celebrate that patron saint in sort of like these ways i know i know this is very traditional and I just wanted to share this with you. And actually, I would like to hear from you. Does this sound weird to you? Is this something that actually happens in your country as well? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's say, Sally says, Adesso mi ricordo aver visto le frecce di colore l'anno scorso nell'internet. Non sapevo che era per quella festa. Yes, they were for that. Yes, they were for that. It was for Festa della Repubblica. Okay, let's move on to Luglio. But we haven't, haven't got much in Luglio. So let's move on to Agosto, which is August. Oops. <laughs> I really need a drink, sorry. <laughs> okay, so Agosto. And uh, in August, we just have one main one. It's Ferragosto. Ferragosto. Ferragosto is the 15th of August. <laughs> so the 15th of August uh, is basically the culmination of summer. So on this day, Italians, they normally, uh, on the night, they normally have bonfires on the beach. Um, we, uh, we have obviously massive lunches on that day. That is uh, for us the culmination of the summer. Uh, in a way, it's a very happy day, but in a way for me, at least it's kind of sad as well, because since it is the culmination of summer, it means that af after the summer is kind of like going down, because summer is kind of starting to be over. 
So it's a very happy day. We celebrate with a bonfire on the beach. Um, obviously, uh, days on the beach and uh, having massive lunches with family, dancing, parties, and all of these things. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to go quick because I know, I know, I know it's already... We've already here, been here for 40 minutes now. That's great. Okay. Bye, Nagore. See you soon. Don't worry. Okay. So next one is September. In September, this is something actually new. But in, uh, because when I was little, I didn't really know about this. I think it's something new that started recently. And I really liked it. We celebrate on the 13th of September. Grandparents! <laughs> 13 settembre, giorno dei nonni. Grandparents day. So on this day, uh, we celebrate grandparents and we just do something for them. I think it's great. Moving on to October, nothing to say about this month. But I'm just going to move to November. Okay, on November, there are a couple of things to say. November is the day where we celebrate, is the month where we celebrate a few things. Number one, on the 1st of November, we celebrate, um, ogni, it's called Ogni Santi, which means every saint. So I say, what does it mean, every saint? So the Italian calendar, uh, follows a Catholic calendar and in the Catholic calendar for every every um, every day you have a saint that you celebrate and if you're named after to that saint it's your name day so in Italy we have this thing where we celebrate name days so for example my name days is on the 8th of August where we celebrate Santa Erminia <laughs> so that is my name day. Uh, other people may have a name day on other days. However, there are some people that don't really have um, their name in the calendar. They don't have their saint, their, the saint they're named after in the calendar. So this is their day. The 1st of November is their day. Is the day where everyone uh, that doesn't have a specific name day can celebrate their name day. So it's great. <laughs> so every saint is celebrated. This is actually why it's called every saint's name. Uh, sorry, every saint's day. Ogni santi. Okay. And right, right after that, we have the 2nd of November where we celebrate people that died. So everyone that died, um, obviously, you know, people in your family that have died. Uh, you celebrate them, and that's, this is a time where people in Italy go to the cemetery, you know, and it's it's a kind of like sad day as well, because obviously you remember people that they're not in your life anymore. Um, and I want to say something about this, because as you can see, the 1st of November and the 2nd of November, they're quite close together, aren't they? So here's what we do. This is something that I believe is really Italian. So let's say that the 1st of November, which is a bank holiday, which means it's, it's like it's holiday in Italy. You don't go to work, okay? Let's say that this day is on a Thursday. And let's say that the day after is a Friday, which is um, the, day, uh, the day where we celebrate that people. And then you have Saturday, which is like uh, maybe like also holiday. And then you have Sunday, which is holiday. The second is not a holiday. The second of November, we just celebrate people there are dead, but it's not a holiday. So you may say, okay, what, what, do, the what do the Italians do? So on the first November, it's holiday. So they don't go to work. Okay. The second November, yeah, they should go to work, right? Because it's not, I'm, I know we celebrate uh, the, the people that died, but it's not like really holiday. And then the, fourth of November, uh, the 3rd of November, yeah, it's Saturday, so it's the weekend and then you have Sunday. So in Italy, this is what we do. We also have a holiday on the second. Uh, if it falls, you know, uh, very likely it does. <laughs> it falls like on a Friday or, you know, on a day which is close to another holiday. 
And that one is uh, what we say, fare il ponte. <laughs> so fare il ponte is an Italian expression that means to make a bridge. You're making the bridge, a holiday bridge between two days. So if one day is holiday, the other day is not a holiday, the day after is a holiday, you take the day in the middle and make a holiday as well. And that is what's called fare il ponte. Okay, so this is what happens often. <laughs> and it's great, obviously. <laughs> so this is why it's often in Italy. The first is holiday, the second is holiday, the third is holiday as well, and the fourth is holiday as well. Okay. <laughs> and then, I don't know, like, uh, do you do something similar in your country? I don't, I don't think in the UK they do. But I would love to know what happens in your country. Right. I am about to... Oh, yes, Bill, thank you. 2nd of November, All Souls Day. Yes, I couldn't remember the English. Thank you. So, I am just going to go to December. December, December, December. And then I am just going to uh, tell you a few ways that you can make your life more Italian. Okay, December... Obviously, we celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December. However, there is a day on the 8th of December where um, we celebrate um, uh, the, uh, it's called Festa dell'Immacolata. This is a holiday, okay? And it's basically Immaculate Conception Day. It was like, it's basically the day where we celebrate uh, the Virgin Mary uh, being pregnant of Jesus. Uh, and on that day, uh, this is the day of the Christmas tree in Italy. So on that day, traditionally, Italian family put on the Christmas tree. Um, so if you are, uh, if you know, Christmas approaching, uh, most Italians do the Christmas tree on the 8th of December, if they are traditionalists. If they are not, you know, they may start to put it up in October. <laughs> some people do. I've seen this doing this. I've seen some people doing this. But, you know, traditional people put the Christmas tree on on the 8th of December in Italy, which is Immaculate Conception Day. When do you put on your Christmas tree? Uh, I like to put it on on the 8th of December because I like traditions, you know. What about you? Okay, folks, I uh, I have talked a lot on this. I think this is one of the live where I talk the most. So I am going to do a quiz, you know, and I'm going to do a quiz to wrap this up and then I'm just going to tell you a few few nice ways that you can bring Italy in your life this year, despite being in whatever country you are. Okay? So, are you ready for a quiz? Because if you are, please drop a smiley face in the chat, because I love smiley faces. Okay, so Flo is saying, uh, Father Ponte, we do that in France too. Yes, I love French people. <laughs> Isn't that great, Flo? Like, that is great. Fare il ponte is one of the best things that we do in Italy. It's great. One day holiday, one day another holiday, the other day holiday, not a problem. Let's do everything holiday. It's amazing. <laughs> right. I'm going to do the quiz. Come on, folks. Let's do it. Two questions. I'll just do two questions, okay? So, okay. Domanda numero uno. Quale genitore si festeggia a maggio? Which parents do, you, do we celebrate in Italy? You know, do you remember? Which parents do we celebrate in Italy? In May? In May? Which parents do we celebrate in Italy? Is that... Padre o madre? You tell me. Sally, mi piacerebbe fare il ponte. Yes, I know. <laughs> I think it's clever, you know, because 
after after you are if you're on a holiday if you're on a holiday and then there is another day where you're not on holiday and then there is another day where you're not on holiday you know you just switched off you cannot work properly so you know it's better to do you know a proper holiday <laughs> okay so what do we celebrate in may which parents mama yes okay we celebrate moms mom 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 yes 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 okay and the other question is cosa fanno molte famiglie italiane l'8 dicembre what do many italian family do on the 8th of december you tell me i just told you before <laughs> Cosa fanno molte famiglie italiane l'8 dicembre? What do most Italian family do on the 8th of December? If they are traditionalists like me. I know the answer are coming. I'm just going to rock for a bit. I'm going to drink. No, Nini, we don't have Halloween. I mean, recently uh, it started to spread uh, Halloween. Yeah, we, we celebrate it uh, by something very recent, you know, we don't really have as a tradition. Uh, probably, you know, in a few years time, it will be. So what do most family do on the 8th? of December. Alisa says, light the tree, Bill says, put Christmas tree, put, uh, Marie put up at the Christmas tree, uh, celebrate a blessed mother, Sally, come si dice, put up the tree, montare l'albero di Natale. You say, fare l'albero di Natale. Fare l'albero di Natale. And that's what we do on the 8th of December. Yes! Fare l'albero di Natale. Yes, we make the Christmas tree. We put it up. We'll light it up. And that's the start of Christmas. Okay, folks. Well, this was a long, 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 long explanation. I hope I didn't bore you. And I hope it kind of like spark your imagination how you can celebrate these things in your own place wherever you are if you want to feel more italian maybe you can um you know celebrate any of these things in your own house with your family no one no one can, can tell you you cannot do it right it doesn't matter if it's not in your calendar you can do it anyway right folks apart from this what are the other ways that you can make your life more Italian? What are the ways how you can make your life more Italian? You tell me first. Do you have any way that you make your life more Italian? I have a few ways I'd like to share with you. But, you know, you can tell me first. What do, what do you think? Because I'd like to hear from you. I have put all of my ways uh, in the uh, learning sheet for today. Uh, here it is. Here they are. They're all in Italian. Don't worry, I'll go through them with you. But I would like to know um, from you first. What are your ways? What are your ways? Let's see. What do you say? Do, 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 do. I'll look forward to here. I look forward to hear from you first. How do you make your life more Italian in your own way? You tell me, you tell me, you tell me, you tell me, you tell me. And you know what? If you say, look, I have no idea. You tell me. <laughs> tell me, tell me. How can I do this? How, how, how? I'll tell you. Right. Okay. Let's see what people say. Shelly says, 
ascoltare la musica italiana. Yes, I like that. Yes, and it's also in my list too, you know, it's right here, it's the second one. So uh, there is a there's a clickable link in the learning sheet in this playlist. Yes. So if you click, I made a playlist, I made lots of plays, but this is one of the playlists I made with Italian music. I hope you like it. So you can start to listen to Italian music if you want to make your life more Italian or listen to an Italian radio like Radio Italia. It's great. What's, what's happening? <laughs> Sally mangiare la pizza. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Flo, say, uh, Italian food, Italian films, Italian playlists, yes. Fare la pazza. <laughs> okay, okay. Bill, I try to incorporate Italian holidays in my life. I also listen to music, Ita Ita Italiana, musica italiana. Yes, okay. Um, trip to Italy in summer, Flo. Yes, that's great. Uh, Marie, watch Italian films on occasion, Italian music. Yes, I can see that music plays a big thing. That's great because it's true. Play, music makes everything better and uh, it just gives you uh, a little bit of Italianness to your life. It's Italian if it's Italian music, obviously. Okay, so we mentioned a few things. Ascoltare musica italiana. So uh, you could celebrate, festeggia gli eventi sopra, celebrate the events above. So the ones that we talked about before, yeah, you can celebrate those ones. Another thing that someone of you, someone of you say, said, compra, prepare, mangia cibo italiano. Buy, prepare and eat Italian food. And here I have a link with uh, a recipe channel on youtube which i follow as well it's great it's uh it gives you all lots of re lots of recipe in italian very nice food uh and then this one fai un progetto creativo in italiano make a creative project in italian really what are you passionate about what do you like doing do you like writing stories write them in italian do you like creating scrapbooks Create a scrapbooks with Italian stuff, articles, you know, pictures. Uh, you can create a, a photo album and write the, the caption in Italian if you like. You know, create something that you can do in Italian. Or if you're a sporty person and you like yoga, zumba, aerobica, fai attività sportiva. Con video in Italiano. There are loads of YouTube channel on uh, on YouTube where you can follow people doing yoga, zumba, aerobica, aerobics. You know, yoga. I have a link here to a channel that I follow. Um, and then you can also watch Italian TV. Uh, Rai. This is a link, clickable link to the Rai, which is the main Italian television media set, which is the other main Italian television. You say, how can I do this? I cannot. It doesn't happen to me. Well, there is a little uh, thing that you can use, a plugin. I don't know what's called. Is it a plugin or is it uh, something? <laughs> It's something that you install in your um, uh, Google, in your uh, browser. It's called BPM. Okay. It's like a sort of app plugin and you can access to the Italian uh, uh, TV. And then you, if you have Netflix, you know, Amazon Prime, Sky, YouTube, you can also watch things in Italian, Italian series. Uh, and then here I have uh, a link here uh, where I link to some of my series that I watched in the past and then uh, I've been watching as well. Another thing that you can do is to organize or join. Organizza o partecipa. Organize or join. Uh, conversation, meet up in Italian, and sometimes we do some in my Facebook group. So come and join the Facebook group. There is a link to the Facebook group here, qui, but uh, there is also a link below in the description of this video. And then other things that you can do in Italian. 
segue the account to Instagram. Follow accounts on Instagram that are related to your passion, relativi alle tue passioni. You can read stories in Italian, leggi storie in italiano. Like, come, this one, this one, this one. Questa, questa, questa. These are all links. And uh, again, if you're wondering, where the hell is this? It's in the, um, it, this worksheet is in the description below this video. You can download it. There's the link just down here. Uh, and then you can do your shopping list. Fai la tua lista della spesa or all the list, tutte le liste in italiano. So you could literally, every time you need to make a list, personally, I do a lot of lists. I make a lot of lists and I do in Italian. You can do them in Italian too. It's also a way to practice your Italian. Or you can keep a diary. Tieni un diario. Keep a diary or on agenda in Italiano or a journal in Italian. You could do that too. Anything else, altro? What do you think? So what do you think, folks? Which one? Okay, tell me which one of these ways. Oh, thank you, Bill is putting all the links in the in the in the chat. You are the best. Thank you so much. Uh is putting all the links to the Italian series uh and the stories that I linked. This is great. Thank you so much, Bill. You are amazing. And now tell me. What is the thing that you'd like to do? Tell me one thing that you'd like to do in Italian among the one that we've seen. Uh, which is the one that inspires you the most? I think this is important, the word inspire you the most, because um, if it, it's, not, it's not something that you would like to do, then don't do it because, you know, it's not going to work. So it needs to be something that really, that you really, really like. Okay. And... Uh, for example, I know that there's Sally in the chat and Sally, uh, she has a creative project in Italian and her creative project is to, uh, is to listen and probably she's going to write a song in Italian. I'm not going to put pressure on you, Sally, but we spoke about that. And if you do your song, please share it with us. I would love to hear your song in Italian. But she, Sally listens to a lot of Italian music. Uh, she is really good at playing. So, you know, I think that was the best greedy project that she could pick for herself. Um, <laughs> oh, here, here she is. She said, Io vado a cercare il video di Zumba Ribbon in italiano. Yes! Go for it! <laughs> Go for it! Um, yes. Go and look up for those uh, videos of Zumba in Italian because you will find loads of them. <laughs> okay, right, folks. Uh, with this, I would say grazie. Thank you for coming today, and especially if you're someone who always come. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I really, really, uh, I'm really, really happy um, to do this live for the first time uh, of this year and i am gonna do more i hope you have enjoyed it and uh, if you're on my email list if you're not you should sign up because i am going to send next week an invite to all of the people on my email list to my personal italian carnival carnevale italiano online <laughs> it's gonna be great uh it's gonna be an online event and we are going to uh, play together we are going to prepare also a recipe an italian recipe that we normally prepare on that day uh we are going to have a dance party as well don't worry i will i will teach you the steps and we of course we are going to dress up and play games and say jokes. And I hope you can come. Uh, if you're not on my email list, please sign up. The link is below in the description of this video. And I shall see you very, very soon. Ci vediamo. Ciao a tutti. I hope you have a great Italian year. I am going to have one as well. 
and we're gonna have it all together. Ciao! Ciao, ciao, ciao! Ciao! Oh my goodness, ciao! <laughs>